a better night's sleep. Use only as directed. Brands are trademarks of their respective owners. Kids who go to school in Southern California will now have to pay more for school lunches because of higher gas and food prices. Lauren Glenn is a nutritional services director for Norwalk La Mirada Schools. We're getting notification from vendors that they were not able to honor their bids, that um, their prices have gone up, and that we're welcome to go to the next lowest bidder um, if we need to, but um, everyone's prices have increased. She says in the past year, the cost of food and supplies for school meals have gone up 26%. There's one lucky guy on death row. A 68-year-old court ruling may allow a man to live. Here's ABC's Brad Farrell to explain. In 1940, the Arkansas Supreme Court ruled that a person cannot be convicted of robbery for trying to retake money lost gambling on the basis that it's not robbery to force the return of the money. Two years ago, Michael Daniels stabbed another man to death after losing 20 bucks in a game of three-card Monty and was convicted of aggravated robbery, then sentenced to death. Acknowledging that its 1940 decision may not be in the public interest, the Supreme Court says it's still good law and ordered Daniels off death row. Brad Farrell, ABC News. Yeah, this one's going to make you feel old. Remember the group Hanson? They were known for this song, which was big in the 90s. Well, Zach Hanson, the youngest brother of the musical group Hanson, is now a father. He's 22 years old. He and his wife welcome their son, John, into the world this week. This is ABC News. Here's another Vanguard Simple Truth. Start early, stay the course. Instead of timing markets and chasing trends, we recommend a slow and steady investment approach. When combined with Vanguard's cost at 160 industry average, that can mean the more wealth you build, the more you'll likely keep. Visit Vanguard.com to obtain a prospectus with investment objectives, risks, charges, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. Investments are subject to risk. Source of average cost data, Liver Inc. as of 1230-107. Vanguard Marketing Corporation Distributor. Now, it's time for the local news from the WGS. A dentist who declared himself a citizen of the Republic of Louisiana in an attempt to dodge income taxes has been sentenced to two and a half years in jail. Hello, everybody. Terry Easley, WGSO News, talking about Dennis Louis Genard of Slidell, ordered to pay $155,000 in restitution to the IRS. In August of 1997, Genard renounced his U.S. citizenship. He filed an affidavit, even, that declared him a sovereign citizen of the Republic of Louisiana, which he sent directly to the IRS. Didn't work, though. During pretrial hearings on the case, Gennard lost the motion to dismiss the charges because his status as ambassador and citizen of the kingdom of heaven under its King Jesus Christ gave him diplomatic immunity. Well, St. Tammany Parish invites all area marinas to a workshop for the Louisiana Clean Marina Program. That workshop will be held Tuesday, June the 17th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on the St. Tammany Parish Council Chambers there on Coop Drive in Mandeville. Speaking of Mandeville, the police there tell us that they had two separate incidents where three individuals were attacked by several unknown subjects. These incidents occurred on the Mandeville Lakefront. In the first incident, a jogger was approached by four suspects in a dark color SUV while he, a 53-year-old man, was jogging at the corner of Lakeshore Drive and West Beach Parkway. The victim stated that the driver of the vehicle stopped and asked for directions. The victim tried to get away from the subjects, but they pursued him. The victim was struck in the head from behind. The victim received medical treatment at a local hospital and was treated for broken collarbone and abrasions. And the body of a teenager missing has been found floating in Bayou Lafouche. Once the body was recovered, authorities confirmed yesterday it was that of 17-year-old Joshua LeBlanc of La Rose. Sheriff Craig Weber says LeBlanc had been missing since early Wednesday morning. Your WGSO weather forecast is up next. You're listening to 990 AM News. From the WGSO Weather Center, here's your weather forecast with meteorologist Mike Jensen of ABC 26. Don't forget that sunscreen if you're going to be outside today. Mostly sunny skies on our Friday afternoon and highs topping out in the upper 80s to near 90. We're going to stay warm and muggy for tonight with very few clouds around. We should have no problem seeing the stars. The temperatures are only going to fall off into the upper 60s on the North Shore. Low 70s on the South Shore. 
On ABC 26, weatherdown meteorologist Mark Jansen. On WGSO 990 AM and WGSO.com. For a fly of the roast beef po' boy, you want the best po' boy on the North Shore. That's Daryl's. Homemade just the way you want it. Come to Daryl's on Florida Street in Mandeville. WGSO 990 AM is giving our listeners a chance to win $9,990 with the WGSO Cash Vault. Be listening every day and WGSO will be telling you where we'll be broadcasting from. Show up and enter any six-digit code. And if it matches, you win $9,990. Just like that. For the station that makes you a winner, WGSO 990. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Ed Clancy Show on WGSO 990 AM and at WGSO.com. Join in the conversation. It's a free call on the North Shore at 661-2929 and on the South Shore, 556-9696. Now, here's your host, the looming legend, the nearly famous WGSO Zone, Ed Clancy. technical difficulty here on the Clancy Show, but you know that that was Paul Stuckey in the wedding song, and hopefully we'll hear more back from him a little bit later on. We thank you very much for joining us. We are coming to you live from Muriel's Restaurant in Jackson Square in the French Quarter, and I got some very special guests today. First up will be Bonnie Broll of the House of Broll, and I've been uh, perusing her book that she has out. We're going to talk about that and her her career. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a book and a movie. I know that much. Also, later on, we're going to be joined by Mr. Ken Ferdinand of the French Market uh, Corporation. Um, we are going to uh, uh, officially French Market District and talk about some of the neat stuff that's going on there in this general vicinity. Just a stone's throw from where we're sitting on, uh, on the Clancy Show. Gus uh, Martin from the uh, the restaurant here, Mr. Chef, will be joining us, and uh, he's going to be regaling us with some great food here today. I promise, guests, we will be getting food uh, <laughs> before we get out of here today. It's just stuff that is unbelievable. It's, it's Crustacean Celebration Month here at uh, Muriel's, and you'll be hearing more and more about that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to our microphone Miss Bonnie Bro. Hi, Bonnie. Happy to be with you today. How are you today? Great. Okay, are we having a, a technical thing here? Just uh, a little bit. All righty. I'm not quite sure that. Okay. Do we want to switch? Um, you may have to switch mics. Okay, switch mics. Or at least, is it the mics or the input, you think? It's probably a mic. Okay. Oh, okay. So, stand by, ladies and gentlemen. I wonder if there's a switch on this. Is there a switch on this? No. No, there's not? Okay. No. All right, well, Bonnie... Steven, it's probably just a bad mic. Yeah, okay. Bonnie, yeah. let us do this. We're going to mess up your hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And it's, it's, yeah, yeah, you may have to put that all the way up top. I, I probably did. Put that thing down there that looks like a stick in front of your face. And we'll do that. Okay. And, uh... All right. Can you hear me now? I can hear you fine. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Bonnie Cole. Yes. Oh, there we go. I think I heard something there. Speak right into that microphone. Okie dokie. Okay. Get it as close to your mouth as you can, that little mic. At any rate, welcome aboard. I apologize for that. House of Broll is the name of the book, the inside story. What got you interested in weddings, Bonnie Broll? Well, I started out not being necessarily interested in weddings, but interested in designing dresses for people. Oh, really? Yes, and uh, it evolved into the wedding business. Ah, and uh, that was um, that was a situation you found yourself in 
just because you were into, into one of the designs. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That seems to be the, the big need out there. It started off with mothers, because mothers never can find the right dress. When did the House of Rolls start? Uh, well, I guess it started when I was about 16 years old. Uh-huh. And uh, that's when I first started designing. Okay. Uh, 16, huh? Yeah. Wow. But you didn't go to school for it? Did, no, you, go to, really, did no. you go to school? No. no? Uh, now, talk to me about when you were a kid. You had asthma as a child? Yes, very severe. Yeah. 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 How did you deal with that? Well, I just uh, felt that I could overcome it. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually I did. Okay. Um, but you don't, you're not on medication now, huh? No, not at all. No. How did it affect your life? Well, as a young girl, it was difficult because I wasn't able to run upstairs and uh -huh. do a lot of the physical things that other kids could do. So yeah. It was limiting. Okay. Um, so, the book, House of Roll, The Inside Story. Right. It's a book and a movie, I know that. Absolutely. It's going to be, and it should be. Tell me why you wrote the book. Well, really, uh, it's an inspiration to other people who, you know, I was uh, put down so much by my mother and I had two divorces. I was a single parent with two children to raise and mm -hmm. um, nobody had much hope for me. Uh -huh. And uh, I just was determined that one day I was going to end up on St. Charles Avenue with my own place. And you did? And I did. You wound up, uh, and that's where the mansion is now, right? I uh, know. I started out at 1507 St. Charles. Oh, okay. And I was there for five years before I could jump into the big mansion. Ah, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're hearing the Crescent City Suite on the Classy Show. We'll be back right after this on WGSO 990 Forever and Ever with our guest, Bonnie Broll of the House of Broll, WGSO 990 AM. Square offers a crustacean celebration. Chef Gus Martin's four-course salute to the Louisiana blue crab, like jumbo lump crab meat ravioli with chanterelle mushroom and goat cheese, or roasted Creole tomato bisque with Louisiana blue crab and avocado, or pan-roasted soft-shelled crab. Muriel's crustacean celebration proceeds benefit the Crescent City Farmers Market. Lunch and dinner daily, jazz brunch on Sunday. Muriel's Jackson Square, 568-1885, 568-1885. Way down yonder in New Orleans, or New Orleans as they say properly, this is Bill O'Reilly. You can now get the Radio Factor on the North Shore at WGSO 990 AM, weekdays 1101. Be listening on Fridays to WGSO AM 990 for free drinks on Friday, brought to you by the old Ice House on Fresh Green Fidel. It's where a party up to 12 can bring a free round of drinks and four appetizers. Just by listening, you call it into win. From your friends at WGSO 990 AM in the old Ice House, steak and seafood on Front Street, Friday. Free drinks on Friday, only WGSO and the old Ice House in Friday. Free day. It's Wayne down at Furniture Liquidators in Slidell, the big yellow furniture store. We save you money. Furniture Liquidators, 3755 Bonds Turn Drive, Slidell. Bedrooms, 398. Living rooms, 398. Dining room sets, 198. All mattress sets, half price. House full of furniture, 998. It's the big yellow furniture store, Furniture Liquidator, 3755 Ponce and Train Drive in Slidell. We'll make it like Christmas. Furniture Liquidators with three locations, serving Slidell, Bay St. Louis, and Gulfport. What final words would you leave for your family if you knew you would never see them again? When a coal miner trapped far below the surface sensed himself weakening from carbon monoxide poisoning, he scrawled a brief note in the dark to his family. Tell all, I'll see them on the other side. I love you. Those are probably the three most powerful words in all human languages. And they may be the three most powerful words in the Bible as well. John 3.16 says that God is so loved. He so loved the world that he reached out in our spiritual darkness to save us. This is 
David Jeremiah, encouraging you to get on the road to new life. Discover God's love on Route 66. Route 66, driving the word home. Log on to Route66Life.com and get your roadmap for life. Route 66, start your journey home today. Need a pawn shop or want to buy or sell tools, jewelry, or musical instruments? Visit Jerry's Buy and Sell Pawn Shop on Old Spanish Trail at Poncha Train Drive, Slidell. It's golf season. Visit Professional Custom Clubs and Repairs on Veterans and Metairie. Professional Custom Clubs and Repairs. Call 454-6311. Former Marine Captain Dan DeBlanc says American patriotism and South Louisiana cooking combined forces at Southside Cafe, Ponce Train Drive, Slidell. Southsidecafe.net. WGSO 990 AM is giving our listeners a chance to win $9,990 with the WGSO Cash Ball. Be listening every day, and WGSO will be telling you where we'll be broadcasting from. Show up and enter any six-digit code, and if it matches, you win $9,990. $990. Just like that. With a station that makes you a winner. WGSO 990 AM. He's the bridge over troubled waters. Or swampland. To speak with Ed Clancy, call 661-2929 North Shore or 556-9696 on the South Shore. Say, hey, Ed. And wedding song. And we're talking with Bonnie Broll about weddings and her career and her book, The House of Broll, The Inside Story. And it's not just about weddings. It's uh, it's about a lot of things. And uh, she says she wrote uh, the book. One of the reasons was about her uh, because of her dad. Tell me about your dad. Go ahead. Uh, I just had to tell his story. He started out with uh, in the First World War. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, should I start from the beginning here? Okay. Uh, well, Daddy was a remarkable man, and he was, uh, he started uh, off in life as a very, very wealthy man because he was raised as, as a Polish count in Russia and uh, was very wealthy, and then he was fallen in battle in the First World War on the side of the Russians and uh, was fi finally ma managed to get to this country in 1915 and came in here with nothing and started life all over again in America and built the American Frog Canning Company. The what? The what? <laughs> American Frog Canning Company. Wow. And uh, became very, very wealthy in his own right in the 1930s, right after the Depression, which was quite a remarkable feat. So uh, I had to tell this story. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, uh, is that still around, the Frog Canning Company? No, no, it's been gone for years. Uh, he sold it in the 30s and uh, went to Detroit, uh -huh. and that's where they... They took me as an infant in the uh, 40s. Yeah, but they had a, uh, a, uh, you had quite a relationship with your dad. Eventually, yes. Yes, we did. I mean, he taught me an awful lot about life and uh, business. I learned so much from him. He always said, you know, if you start a business, remember it's going to take you three years to break even and five years to make money. And I pretty much found that to be the case. Wow, that's everything, I guess. Listen, uh, now, what's another reason you wrote the book? Well, to help other women, dis you know, discover the fact that they can do it. They can make, I think anybody can do anything they want to do if they want to do it badly enough and, and put that passion into their life. Uh-huh. And uh, how did you wind up with the mansion that you have now? Well, it's in the book. Oh, <laughs> you got to read the book. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, all right, now, what's the third reason you wrote the book? Well, I also wanted to read it uh, to write it because of uh, my experience with cancer and my decision to not do chemotherapy, and I wanted to show other people that they could also make that decision mm -hmm. and uh, heal themselves through other means mm -hmm. with uh, vitamins and minerals and ch changing their lifestyle, maybe, because okay. I know that I had been on such a fast pace in my life, and I... Yeah. I only slowed down enough to smell the roses, so to speak, and All right. uh, healed, healed myself that way. Now, you have done, how many weddings have you planned over the years? Oh, my God. I, I can't even begin to think about it. Is it the thousands? Thousands. The ten thousands? Twenty thousands? Uh, hundred thousands? <laughs> Lots of them, huh? Lots of them. <laughs> okay. Now, how many have you participated in yourself? 
Uh, well, we I, I realized the other day it's been over 20 years that I've been doing at least 100 weddings a, a year. Okay. So we can. Start. And how many times have you been married? Four. Four times. Okay. So you got into the spirit of the thing, is that? Well, right? not really. But. <laughs> but um, and you you were telling me that your last the. Marriage right. and divorce is and another it, reason for writing the book. It was another reason for writing the book because uh, I think other women need to know how to help men who have been treated unfairly uh -huh. need to know how to battle back against that. You uh -huh. know, not just accept it and say, oh, poor me. You know, that's just not my style. I had to uh, go out there and, 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 uh, when, and make things happen. When you see uh, these young people coming to you to get married, uh, you know what your experience was in marriage, and do you, is it something like you saying, well, maybe they'll get it right? Oh, there's always that hope, absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, I saw somebody have a 65th wedding anniversary uh -huh. that uh, that goes to the little beauty shop by me. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's there for some people. Yeah. And I'm still not discouraged about it. Yeah. You know, it was hard to go through a this last divorce, but um, I still marry people all the time. <laughs> tell me about, uh, tell me as much as you want to about the last divorce, because uh, I know it's, uh, it's it's like a pivotal thing in your book here, right? Yes, it is, and I, you know, and I, I can understand the rage that uh, you know they say no, uh, there's nothing worse than a woman uh, scorned, and and uh, <laughs> boy, I proved that point. <laughs> You didn't get mad, you got even? I got even, baby. Uh, <laughs> I sure did. Uh, and it was, uh, and, and that's what I want to, that's one of the things I wanted to write about. Yeah. To show other people that they don't have to become victims. Yeah. I, uh, I just don't believe in victimhood at all. You not only got even, you got pictures. I got pictures. Right. <laughs> they're in the book. They're in, they're in the book. That's incredible. Um, and it's. That, that's that that's would that sell the book. It's just on that alone here. You've got pictures right. of uh, of your ex with um, with, with his two females. With, with his okay. <laughs> two female companions. Yeah, and there's no names in the book. No names in no, the book no. on that. No. Okay. But uh, there are some uh, uh, pi disguised pictures, I guess you Correct. could say. You could say. But now now the, the mansion itself. Now my understanding is that you no longer sell uh, wedding dresses or or bridesmaids dresses. Special order wedding dresses. Uh huh. Or, a few clients. And, uh, but you do have weddings at the mansion. Oh, yes, we do. Okay, that's beautiful the, weddings. That's the whole deal. Weddings and receptions. Uh -huh. and we do all the catering, and, and now everything is beautifully done, and it makes a wonderful experience for people. And it's also a museum, right? On the second floor, we have a beautiful dollhouse and miniature museum. Uh huh. Yes. What uh, kinds of things are there? Uh, uh, well, I have 14 museum quality dollhouses wow. and 40 vignettes or room boxes. Um, uh, most everything in the museum, at least 95%, I did myself. Now explain vignette to me. Uh, it's a, in other words, it's not a large box. It's not a large house. It's a small box that contains miniatures, and it's they're all got different themes. Oh, okay. I got that. So it's, uh, it's like models. Now, is that open, uh, it's open for the weddings as well? Yes, yes. When we do weddings in the house, we do private tours of, okay. of the, the museum upstairs. So it's also open during the week. You do receptions yeah. there? We do receptions in the in the first floor. Uh, right, exactly. Right. The museum's on the second okay, floor. Okay, so you can get married in the mansion. Get married in the mansion. Have the reception in the mansion. Correct. Okay. And uh, now, if somebody gets married at St. Louis Cathedral, where do they have their reception if it's up to you? Muriel! <laughs> Just wanted Muriel, to get that in there. Muriel, we love Muriel. Wanted to get that in My there. My favorite yeah. restaurant in the whole world. Yeah. yeah. This is a book and a movie, folks. Uh, so the, the actual mansion right now, is it 1507? No, no, 1507 was my first That's the location. original one, okay. Now it's at 2220 St. Charles That's Avenue, right, that's right. Right off of Jackson. Absolutely, and uh, uh, when we come back, we're going to continue with Bonnie, and then also going to introduce our, our new guest, but uh, we'll also let you know uh, how to get a hold of uh, the book and where the website is and how you can uh, reserve, and we'll do a couple of do's and don'ts of weddings. Uh, uh, I'm just, you know... It's just uh, incredible. We could do three or four hours with Bonnie Brawl, I know that. And uh, But if you want, want to find out about it, the book, House of Brawl, The Inside Story, uh, we will get it 
get that information to you. You're listening to The Clancy Show on WGSO. Live from Muriel's Restaurant at Jackson Square, 990 AM. Restaurant Metairie for the new Andreas Capri Blue Piano Bar, where you can enjoy the music, good company, and three appetizers with a glass of wine for $25. And Andreas Restaurant can seat up to 500 guests in their banquet hall. Perfect for your special event. Come to Andreas Restaurant for unbelievably delicious northern Italian cuisine and stay for the new Capri Blue Piano Bar. Andreas Restaurant, Ridge Lake in Metairie. AndreasRestaurant.com. Home Instead Senior Care, the world's largest provider of non-medical services to seniors. Whether it's extra help with meal preparation, light housekeeping, escorts to the doctor or mall, these caregivers are willing to serve. Home Instead caregivers go through a detailed screening process, including a thorough reference and background check. Each is bonded and insured. Caregivers and clients are selected for that perfect match to help your loved ones. For trusted and affordable in-home services, request a free consultation at homeinstead.com today. They don't just care for seniors, they care about seniors. Years. It's the West St. Tammany Wide Summer Day Camp, May 27th through August 1st, for ages 5 through 12. There will be 10 one-week sessions Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30. Before and after camp care is also available. Swim lessons are available for campers at an additional cost. We'll have two weekly field trips, arts and crafts, music, sports, aquatics, and team building games. What are you waiting for? Register today. Call 985-893-YMCA. YMCA Activity Center, 71256 Francis Road in Covington. Hey, New Orleans and the North Shore, this is Steve Malsberg. It's great to be part of WGSO 990 AM or WGSO.com. Catch the Steve Malsberg Show every night from 10 to midnight here on WGSO 990 AM. I'll have the top newsmakers of the day and biting analysis for you to chew on. You've seen me on the Fox News Channel, MSNBC, CNN. Now you can hear me. Steve Malsberg every night from 10 to midnight here on WGSO 990 AM. Did you ever hear that cheese is a favorite food of all mice? Well, that's just a myth. Here's the fact. Mice love all food, often eating up to 8 pounds of it in their lifetime. Mice spread disease through urine, droppings, and dander, contaminating food and surfaces like counters and floors, and that's no myth. A Pest Professional is your best defense against the devastation rodents, termites, roaches, and ants can cause to your home and family. Visit PestWorld.org to hire your Pest Pro today at PESTWorld.org. We're dealing with yesterday's Supreme Court ruling that the children from that polygamous compound must be returned to their parents. Concerns about the safety of those big construction cranes after a collapse in New York City this morning. One construction worker has been killed and two others critically hurt when a piece of this construction crane here at 90. First Street and First Avenue on Manhattan's Upper East Side snapped. It crushed a neighboring corner penthouse apartment before careening down the side of the building, taking with it several balconies. That piece of crane is now lying in the middle of First Avenue. ABC's Aaron Katursky on scene. It was his second deadly crane collapse in three months. In this case, one man died. Democrats meeting in Washington this weekend to deal with those disputed delegates in Michigan and Florida. We had all the candidates on the ballot, unlike Michigan, and it's in, we think it's important for them to recognize that election. Karen Thurman is chair of the Florida Democratic Party. The Democrats will meet in Washington tomorrow. Alex Stone, ABC News. Now, it's time for the local news from the WGSO Newsroom. St. Tammany Parish Police K-9 units taking care of some business in Covington. Yesterday morning, a 24-year-old female was walking in the 100 block of 21st Avenue. A 17-year-old suspect walked up behind her, began beating her up with a metal rod, trying to steal her purse. The 17-year-old identified as Damon Joseph Jerry, just arrested recently in the Covington Police Department Street Crimes Unit Drug Roundup. His money, gun, and drugs were seized by the unit at that time. Jerry was able to rip the victim's purse away from her, even though she fought back. Covington officers arrived on the scene. They contacted the St. Tammany Parish Sheriff's K-9 unit, and the K-9 tracked him down to 711 North Madison Street, where officers found clothing matching the suspect's description hidden in the front of the residence, and they found Jerry inside. The victim identified Jerry as her attacker. Jerry was arrested for armed robbery and aggravated battery. Again, that's Damon Joseph Jerry, a 17-year-old, 
1005 North Van Buren Street in Covington. Meantime, Officer Russell Spinks was patrolling on Columbia Street when he pulled up behind a 2000 white Ford Taurus stopped at North Columbia Street and 32nd Avenue in Covington. Officer Spinks noticed that two male suspects standing next to the vehicle, one had a handgun in his hand. When the suspects they took off, a St. Tammany Parish Sheriff's K-9 unit was called in, tracked them down. They fled along the avenues. The gun was recovered from one of the suspects, a 16-year-old male juvenile. He was accompanied by an 18-year-old male. The three suspects in the Taurus stated that they were just driving down Columbia Street when the two suspects pulled out a gun and robbed them. The case is still under investigation. The only one that is of age, we can tell you the name, is Tavares Miguel Pam, 18 years old, of Galtus Road in Madisonville. 18 years old, already charged with armed robbery, simple battery, contributing to the delinquence of a juvenile. Pam is sitting in the St. Tammany Parish Jail this morning. Your WGSO weather forecast is coming up next. You're listening to 990 AM News. From the WGSO Weather Center, here's your weather forecast with meteorologist Mike Jansen of ABC 26. Finding a spot in the shade may be the best way to stay comfortable this afternoon with mostly sunny skies. Highs are going to top out in the upper 80s to right around 90. There's going to be plenty of humidity around throughout the day and tonight with mostly clear skies will stay warm. With overnight lows in the low 70s on the south shore, we dip down into the upper 60s on the north shore. I'm ABC 26 weather now meteorologist Mike Jansen on WGSO 990 AM and WGSO.com. If you're buying or selling a home, call on the experienced team of Ann and Joy, the Prudential Gardener Realtors, 504-207-1010. Or visit their website, annandjoy.com, for more information. And if you're thinking of great pizza, salad, calzones, or pasta, call Reginelli's Pizzeria with six convenient locations to serve you. Visit their website, reginelli's.com. Bill O'Reilly here. Thank you, WGSO AM 990, for adding the radio factor to your weekday lineup. 11 to 1, just another reason to visit your great city. Here's where the WGSO cash balls will be this week. Friday, May 30th, from 3 to 6 p.m., Bernie Cyrus takes his weekend at Bernie's live on the road to the old ice house on Park Street in Slidell. Saturday, May 31st, from 11 to 1 p.m., Terry Easley will be at Furniture Liquidators, 3755 Conscious Train Drive in Slidell. Your chance to win $9,990 for WGSO, 990 a.m. and WGSO.com. You're wasting a perfectly good afternoon on the Ed Classy Show here on WGSO 990 AM and at WGSO.com. It's not a total waste of time if you help it out. Just call 661-2929 on the North Shore or 556-9696 on the South Shore. So, hey, Ed, what's going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Is that Paul is that Paul Stucci in the background there? Let's crank him up if we can hear him. Not at back at the station. There we go. All right, that's the most famous. The most requested, is it not? I believe so. Most requested wedding song, Bonnie Brawl. I think it is. All right. Bonnie Brawl is our guest house of Brawl. We are um, we're having a, having a ball here just talking about the, the things that are in her book. We're going to be joined in a moment by Ken Ferdinand of the uh, French Market. But, uh, Bonnie, before we uh, go any further, and I always like to do this before we run out of time, we'll give the plugs of the, of the where you can get the book, what the website is, the phone numbers. Let's do the whole nine yards. Right okay, now. thank you, Ed. Uh, call me at 504-494-2220. And I'll be happy to make an appointment for you to come pick up a book. Also, you can see our website, which is houseofbrol.com. And we invite you to visit the website and my phone number again. It's my cell phone. You can reach me 24-7 at 494-2220. And I'll be doing my next book signing at the Lakeside Bridal Show that Well Over Video Productions is putting on July 26th and 27th. And I will be doing a book signing at that time. At the Lakeside Mall, right? At the right? Lakeside Mall. All right. July 26th and 27th, a book signing. And uh, once again, if you want to get the book, you can go to houseofbrol.com. Is that correct? Correct. Can you order it there, or have you got to... Uh... Uh, they can just write my... Uh, my uh, 
email address info uh -huh. at houseofgold.com. Okay, wonderful. And it is an incredible book. It's well written. I know you uh, You didn't have an editor. I mean, you didn't have a, a ghostwriter. No, I did Every no, word no. yourself. It's incredible. It's really well done. I've got to give you that. And uh, let me just read just from the back of the book here. It said, the House of Rolls, this is from uh, Jerry Embry. Uh, the House of Broll story begins with Dr. Albert Broll Plater's birth in what was part of the Russian Empire, as uh, uh, Bonnie had mentioned, and brings us to his fascinating tale of frog farming. And then the story follows his daughter's life as she goes on an incredible journey from frogs to fashion. More than a memoir, her story details her meteoric rise in the bridal fashion industry and is a fascinating first-hand account of truly unique New Orleans couture icon, Miss Bonnie Broll. Now... I had a, uh, a person, I used to be one of my producers on the show, his name was Jason Lee, and he told me he was marrying his, his girlfriend, Michelle, this year, and they picked a date, it was April 19th, I told him not to, <laughs> that is my anniversary, <laughs> that wedding, oh, that marriage, uh, well, you know, and then a couple of other things that happened on that date, uh, historically, that... Uh, that uh, Waco and uh, Oklahoma City. Well, the deal is, he decided to do it, and guess what happened? He had a wedding disaster. That is to say, a reception disaster. Uh, basically, what happened was uh, people uh, showed up for the for the reception, and then uh, after 20 minutes, they all left, and they didn't even hang around for the for the dollar dance or whatever they call it, the, the cash money dance, and uh, the first dance with the with, with the, uh, the 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 bride and. Uh, and her, her, her husband, but, uh, and her dad and all of that sort of thing. And, uh, and he said, and I said, wait a minute, what kind of bar do you have? And he said, well, we had a cash bar. And I mentioned that to Bonnie Broll, and you said, I've never heard of a cash bar at a wedding reception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the way to hang around, get them to hang around for the good stuff is to give them a free bar, right? Absolutely. That's one of the do's. That's the do. Okay, the don't is don't have a cash bar, right? That's correct. Give me a couple more do's and don'ts for weddings. Okay, one most important thing of all, if I can say one thing, and that is be flexible on your date. Don't get so set into a date that you can't go off of it because you may not get everything that you want that way. You may have a hurricane. And you may have a hurricane. Exactly. You had one, right? Exactly. And that's while we're talking about hurricanes, if you book anything between June 1st and December 1st, remember you are in hurricane season. And it is a tough time because make sure that whoever you book with is a wedding professional that's been in business a long time and that you agree to it. If, if the wedding has to be postponed, that you will do a mutually agreed upon date in the future. You know, don't expect money back because that's not going to necessarily happen. Okay. But whoever you book with needs to be flexible enough to say, yes, if anything traumatic happens, we will reschedule you in the future and your money can be used towards a future event. Okay, have a little act of God uh, clause in there, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, what else, what other do's and don'ts do we have? Uh, if you're going to have a Catholic wedding, book at least 18 months, if possible, ahead of time. Wow. Because there's fewer churches, because of the lack of priests, and uh, they're closing some churches, and so church, the Catholic churches are getting scarcer and scarcer. Yeah. So uh, it's very important that they book ahead of time. Buy the bridal gown, and once you have a date set in a church, buy the bridal gown before you ever even look at bridesmaids' dresses. Uh, because the bridal gown determines the style of the rest of the wedding. As a wedding planner, do you have problems with the bride's mother? <laughs> ever? Come on. Well, of course. Tell the truth. <laughs> what are kinds of problems do you have? They want to... Well, control issues uh -huh. between the bride and the mom. Yeah, there's a, and, a, and uh, that's a, a very stressful time for the bride, is it not? And the, the relationship well, with her yes, mother. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, sure. Yeah. Is it usually the mother or sometimes the, the mother in law? Oh, it can go either way. Yeah. It can go either way. I always say whoever's paying for it wins. <laughs> <laughs> Makes the rules, right? Right. I right. Got you. Um, now, any, anything we need to know about uh, bridal, uh, like a rehearsal dinner or anything like that? Rehearsal dinner at Muriel's, of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And they have a lot of those here. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, so I, I know you're not selling the dresses, but you can order them and that sort of thing. But do you miss 
the designing part? Not, not at all. You don't? Not at all. Oh, wow. After after many, many years of doing it, uh -huh. you know, and, and I think I accomplished the outlook for design when I did the houses, the little miniature houses. Uh -huh. It was my way of... of putting that creativity out there. Okay, joining me now at the, at the uh, table here, and he's going to join us uh, uh, for uh, till the rest of the uh, for the rest of the half hour, uh, Mr. Ken Ferdinand, Ferdinand right? Uh, I was, um, do they call you Kenny? Yeah, that's sometimes fine. I, uh, I didn't know what they call me a couple of things. So, but <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know that, are you married? Yes. Have you been married uh, quite a while? Yes. Well, how was your wedding? Um, I, I, I'm a musician, so I want to, always wanted to have a oh wow a second line on every street in the French Quarter, and my bride wouldn't go for it, so we went traditional. You did, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, did you have an official planner, a wedding planner? No, we did not. You did not. You no. just kind of did it. Where did you get married? Um, there you go. What? I, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this didn't happen. <laughs> That's that I, uh, how long have you been married? Uh, 16 years. 16 years? Yes, All right. Second. I see. Okay, well, I, uh, I did 16 years. Good. Yeah, Where I you served, I the first served time, the second time, and the third time. I was married in uh, Randolph Air Force Base. Okay. That was my first. That was first and only wedding. All right. Uh, married by uh, the, the chaplain of the New Orleans Police Department. Very uh, good. Very very nice man, and uh, he we flew him over there for that. But what I wanted to know is, um, uh, uh, you've obviously this is the first time you ever met Miss Bonnie, right? Yes, but I knew of her work. Uh, my mother used to drive us by there and look at wedding dresses all the time. Uh huh. I mean that's that's kind of a dream place. I never imagined meeting somebody like this lady. Uh, your place is very well known, and the bride's dresses are obviously very well known. And much appreciated on that street. And uh, Bonnie, God bless you. Thank you. The book, ladies and gentlemen, is available at houseofroll.com, or you can call 504-494-2220. Uh, and uh, that's if you want the book, or you want to plan a wedding. And I uh, want to talk. To, uh, you want to talk to a lady who knows probably more about weddings than anybody in the state of Louisiana, if not the South. Uh, Bonnie, God bless you. Thank you for coming today. Thank you so much. I appreciate for it. Ed Clancy Show, WGSO, 9:90 a.m. This June, Muriel's Jackson Square offers a crustacean celebration. Chef Gus Martin's four-course salute to the Louisiana blue crab. Like jumbo lump crab meat ravioli with chanterelle mushroom and goat cheese. Or roasted Creole tomato this with Louisiana blue crab and avocado. Or pan-roasted soft-shelled crab. Muriel's crustacean celebration. Proceeds benefit the Crescent City Farmer's Market. Lunch and dinner daily. Jazz brunch on Sunday, Muriel's Jackson Square. 568-1885, 568-1885. Ride the world's largest inline butter slide. Blue Bayou, Baton Rouge, Land of the Giants. Ride the world's largest racer slide. Blue Bayou, Land of the Giants. Ride the world's largest bubble slide. Blue Bayou, Baton Rouge, Land of the Giants. Ride the world's largest sled slide. Blue Bayou, Land of the Giants. Drink Coca Cola at Blue Bayou, Land of the Giants. Blue Bayou, Baton Rouge has the most incredible new slides and rides. Like our newest water slide, Voodoo. Down the tube into an immense dark hole, surrounded by a laser light show. And this year's newest poster thrill sensation is rocket. It's extreme. Extreme will send you over 1,400 feet of twist and turn. Experience a different ride each time with over 62 rides. You can't lose. Season passes are only $64.95 and get you access to all big game concerts free. Blue by you, Dixieland. Located on I-10 in the Highland Road exit, Baton Rouge. Ooh, yeah, Chef! The Gumbo Guys on WGSO 990 AM and at WGSO.com. The Gumbo Guys and their guests are a smorgasbord of all the ingredients that make food such an essential element of life here in South Louisiana. WGSO's own Jimmy Delery and Jimmy Collins. Join the Gumbo Guys Saturday afternoons at 1 o'clock on WGSO 990 AM and at WGSO.com. 
It's the St. Tammany Washington Parish's HBA Home Show, June 7th and 8th at the Cascine Center in Pelican Park. I'm Cindy Durache, co-chairman, and you won't want to miss a moment. Look for the official Home Show Guide in the North Shore Conifer or visit schba.org for more information. Former Marine Captain Dan DeBlanc says American patriotism and South Louisiana cooking combined forces at Southside Cafe Train Drive Slidell. Southsidecafe.net. The voice of the North Shore sounds a lot like me, Bill O'Reilly, especially since the Radio Factor airs on WGSO, 990 AM, weekdays, 1101. Don't be a pinhead. Listen. If you're on the North Shore, South Shore, East Shore, West Shore, or Gulf Shores, you're hearing The Ed Clancy Show on WGSO, 990 AM, and on your web at WGSO.com. Join in the conversation. Call 661-2929 at North Shore or 556-9696 on the South Shore. We are back on the Clancy Show. Come be alive and direct from the one of the more beautiful places in the world. Soon, Muriel's. Muriel's Restaurant, Jackson Square. And uh, you just go to Muriel's.com and you'll find uh, all sorts of information about it, including the ghosts upstairs and uh, the man who uh, owned this building way back in the 1800s, hung himself upstairs, and it is now the seance room. It's gorgeous up there, and they've got uh, restaurant facilities upstairs, restaurant facilities all over the first floor, and we're going to be talking with Chef Gus in just a moment about all the food they've just brought out. And... Uh, we are also talking to Mr. French Market himself, Mr. <laughs> Ken uh, Ferdinand. Let's give a plug to your uh, chairman of the board. Charles Napoli. Yeah. He's our president. Uh, Deborah Hawkins is the chair of the steering committee. Mm -hmm. And they've been uh, dutifully working for the last uh, several years, actually, on a construction project in the market. One of the things that I uh, remember, even before I came to New Orleans, I knew about the French Market because... Mm -hmm. Uh, one of my favorite movies is uh, Saratoga Trunk, starring oh. Ingrid Bergman and Gary Cooper, okay? Right. And it's written by Edna Ferber. It's from her book. Okay. And it starts out, uh, the movie is actually divided between the area I was living in, which is Albany, New York, the Syracuse area, and, well, well the Saratoga, New York right. as well area, and New Orleans, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, uh, it, it opens in the French market. Right. And you see, uh, now, I don't know if it was actually filmed here, but uh, they, they had it down to a fairly well in terms of what it was like back in that time. I think there, there are many icons in, in New Orleans, and thank goodness for us, the, the French market is one of them. Yeah. But a cathedral, Jackson Square, those are others. What's the situ what was the situation... Uh, post-Katrina, right after Katrina with the French market. I think most of our damage was wind damage. Uh -huh. um, it, it came to chandeliers and lighting fixtures, which swung in the wind. Um, trees that were blown down. Uh -huh. Roofing damage was significant. But other than that, of course, you know, there was no water build up in the streets of the quarter. No significant water yeah. build up. Not they didn't go away right away. Right, right. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that was good. And uh, so the market came back relatively quickly. Would the you market say? came back. There were people in the in the flea market area that were there throughout, meaning the the days after, mm -hmm. immediately after the, uh, the storm. When we say French market, are we talking farmers market? Yes. And the flea market? Yes. Together. The French market is actually the complex of uh, buildings uh, that are city owned mm -hmm. and operated for. Um, the exchange of food and, and goods. Mm -hmm. uh, it's our retail shopping center. It's probably the oldest shopping center in America, uh, continuously operating. And we didn't, we, we didn't call it a shopping center back there. And it wasn't a mall. No. But it was a complex of stores that uh, goes all the way back to the late 1700s. Wow. And it was start who were the first people to, to sell stuff there? Everybody was here. And when we say everybody, uh, Diversity is an understated term. Uh, it's, a, it's probably the new way of saying everybody was there. Yeah. But when, when you think about all of the people who uh, graced the French market, mm -hmm. it was, of course, Native Americans, mm -hmm. it was the French, it was the Spanish, mm -hmm. it was, of course, Portuguese, the Islamios came from St. Bernard, uh, 
different people uh, from all over the place, including all the way to Mississippi, mm -hmm. Arkansas. And, of course, African Americans as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I would think that it's probably one of the more democratic spaces in the world. Public markets are like that, and this is a public market. Yeah. Every, uh, would you say, I guess every major metropolitan area has a market uh, area like that. It's, it's almost... If, uh, I'm an urban and regional planner, uh -huh. so if you look at how people live in cities, um, they usually have spaces where the residents um, are situated around a public square, mm -hmm. a public area, mm -hmm. and attached to that is a house of worship, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. need to be Christian right. necessarily, but there's always a cathedral or a space yeah. where worshiping is done. Yeah. And then there's a public market. Yeah. Uh, there's a place where all of the economic exchange occurs. For us, it's the French market. In Morocco, it may be something else. Uh huh. Um, maybe Marrakesh. I, I don't know. But when you travel, the interesting thing is no matter what country, what nation, Europe, Asia, Africa, uh huh. when people start deciding how to live, they put together their places of exchange, the public market. They put together a place where they can all recreate, a square. They put together a, a place of worship, the cathedral. Mm -hmm. And they put, a, put there uh, nearby a seat of government, which is our Pantalpas. That's right. So it's, it's a uniform yeah. kind of uh, layout. And I, I actually thought it was more uh, Western, but it is not. It's uh, even visits to China um, and other places, even Africa, you'll, you'll find the same layout. It's, mm -hmm. it's a human way of existing in a community. Where are you from originally? New Orleans. You're from here? Oh, Lower Ninth Ward. Lower Ninth Ward. Next okay. to St. Bernard Parish. How long have you been director at the French Market? How long? The executive director. How long have you been? Oh, I've, well, this is my second time. Uh, the mayor asked me to come to the uh, French Market mm -hmm. this time as executive director to uh -huh, assist okay. in the recovery. Okay. And so I guess uh, when you were a kid, you had memories of the French Market, right? Oh, absolutely. Everybody does. Yeah. Now, Bonnie Brawl, do you, what, do you, what do you remember doing when you were a youngster coming to the French Market? Do you remember? Yeah. The, what was your favorite thing at the French Market, I guess is what I'm asking you. Would it be the food uh, stalls or the, I love the, the, the flea market? The, the fish? fish? Ah, I think the seafood house. The seafood, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's a great memory. Do we still have, I know that uh, you're putting together, and uh, our friend Buddy Stahl was helping you put together some things uh, for the uh, festival coming up. Right. Uh, great French Market Tomato Festival. Yes, so we're going to talk about that. But the, um, uh, he, he mentioned the coffee stalls. Uh, that the, interesting, was the, the interesting thing about the... Uh, well, actually, it's the interesting thing about New Orleans and Louisiana. We're the source of the economy, the great world economy that America is. Uh, and when I say we're the source, if you think back, uh, the components for uh, an economy in terms of goods mm -hmm. back then yeah. wouldn't have been oil. It wouldn't have been plastic. It wouldn't have been uh, other kinds of mechanical products. It would have been cotton, yeah. sugar. Mm -hmm. and rice. And guess who led with that? Louisiana. And guess where that was marketed? Right here in New Orleans. So I like to think that the uh, New Orleans is almost the source of the American economy. And we don't look at ourselves as that. We constantly look at ourselves as less than for some reason when it comes to the economy. Yeah. But we are the source. We are the source for all of the great uh, economy that America speaks of now. And it's, uh, uh, people were here like at five or six in the morning. What was yeah, it? back then, well, in the early days, yeah. everybody was here, first of all, right? Because this was the shopping area. Right. Um, but early morning is when this happened. Now, I, when, I, when I came to the French market in the late 70s, uh, that economy and activity used to start at about three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. The farmers arrived, they brought their products by truck, and they put them out for sale. And the way that worked is you, you had a farm product, yeah. brought it to the market, and up and down the stalls, uh, the wholesalers and the restaurateurs and the grocers would walk up and down and essentially bid for those farm products. They would bid and they would say, I'll take a bushel, mm -hmm. two bushels. So uh, whatever the number 
that farm was that that product was lifted off the back of the truck, uh -huh. put into another truck, and carted off to wherever it needed to go. Can you do me a favor? Can you hang, uh, can hang. after the news here? Yes, we want to definitely. Uh, uh, you, traditionally, the two o'clock hour here at the uh, on the Friday food hour is uh, dedicated to the restaurant and food. And I want to talk about tomatoes. Absolutely. We come back with uh, I'll, Ken, I'll happy Ken Ferdinand, the executive director of the French Market Corporation. That's all going to happen right here on The Clancy Show. Coming to you live and direct from Muriel's Restaurant, Muriel's Jackson Square, WGSO 990, forever and ever AM. Dina's Restaurant since 1932, now on the North Shore, tucked a little out of the way on Highway 22 in the Azalea Plaza. Candina's Mandeville serves New Orleans favorites like shrimp from a lot, turtle soup, and trout almond bean. Don't miss permanent happy hour. Great atmosphere, great food, and Mandina's has nightly specials. Hungry yet? Head over to Mandina's in Mandeville. This is Lee Bellina, Certified Senior Advisor and Life Coach. I'm asking you to join me Saturdays from 7 to 8.30 in the morning for my new program called Senior Solutions. Senior Solutions is a wake-up call about the generational storm that's about to hit America. What happens when 72 million Americans turn 65 for the next 20 years? We will talk about the effect on your family, your finances, and your future. So join us 7 to 8.30 Saturday mornings here on WGSO 990, The Voice of the North Shore. Youngman, the king of the one-liners, used to say that his mother-in-law was so concerned with neatness that she spread out a newspaper under the cuckoo clock, just in case. All of us know people who are a challenge to live with, and we are sometimes a challenge ourselves. So what do we do in those situations? Perhaps something the Bible suggests would help. It says we ought to extend the same understanding and forgiveness to others that God extends to us. After all, if he can extend grace to us, we ought to be able to extend that same grace to others. This is David Jeremiah encouraging you to get on the road to new life. Discover God's understanding on Route 66. Route 66, driving the word home. Log on to Route66life.com and get your roadmap for life. That's Route66life.com. Route 66, start your journey home today. Our friends and listeners call us Voice of the North Shore. The FCC calls us WGSO 990 AM New Orleans. From ABC News. I'm Alex Stone. A second man has now died from a high-rise crane collapse in New York City. This woman lives in the building that was hit by the crane. It sounded like a tractor trailer had crashed or an airplane had crashed, and there was a lot of shaking at the building, which felt like an earthquake. It comes only two and a half months after a previous crane collapse killed seven people in Manhattan. ABC's Aaron Katursky joins me live from New York. Aaron. Alex, the crane's operator was 30 years old, the son of a retired New York City firefighter. He and the second victim were working on an.